These are the illicit chemistry lectures. They're a series of instructions on how to make everything from pipe bombs to smoke bombs to rockets to fireworks, what have you. Basically, we're going to take your regular chemistry you learn in like an AP chemistry course, uh, basically that level, and then augment it uh, with some explanations of applications, particularly in uh, things that they don't want you to know that are killing the amateur chemist, by the way. CEO of Intel back when he was like 12, he, uh, CEO and founder of Intel, he made it, he set up a pile of his own homemade dynamite. So you see, explosives are what motivate innovation. Anywho, um, basically, uh, note, if you, if you happen to know us and can recognize our voices, because uh, we're going to black our faces out on the internet, if you see us, you know us, recognize our voices, don't turn us into the feds, please, just please, just don't, don't like comment on who we are, just don't say anything, just anonymous, that's how we want to keep it. So I'm going to refer to myself as Entropy. I'll be following the name Delta G. Sounds like a rapper. I know, it's Indeed. funny, but it's still a great name because it's thermodynamics. Indeed, yes. Anything to add, Delta G? Well, basically we're going to be covering uh, every aspect of chemistry that they ripped out of your textbook, and we'll be going to so into great detail, especially what most videos fail to mention on where to get the materials, and extreme detail on how to do the procedure, so you can test these devices without blowing your hand off. Yeah, yeah, oh yes, that's one more thing. Keep in mind, if you don't understand how this device works, don't build it. That's the rule of thumb. You do complete research. You've got to understand completely. Because you see, they, the government has basically told you, no, don't build bad. What we're trying to say is, you know, no, you, you can build these devices. Oh, they are fascinating see. things to do research. But you just have to be careful. You know, don't do dumb shit is just how we can summarize our entire disclaimer here. You know, learn carefully. Think through what you're doing. That's the key to not blowing your hand off. And we are not responsible if you kill yourself or blow your hand off or anything else. This is just information. You'll do what you will with it. Right. That was way too long. But that All right, what we're going to be explaining to you today is a device known as a smoke bomb. It's a very simple fuel oxidizer mix, solid fuel, solid oxidizer. Oxidizer being potassium nitrate, fuel being sucrose or common table sugar. Now this device, when it burns, will produce considerable heat. You should see a nice or orange or blue flame, depending on the heats, because of the um, ionization of potassium ion. And you will get about 600 times the original volume of the reactants in volume of smoke. All right, so now balanced. Four molecules of potassium oxide, two molecules nitrogen gas and five molecules oxygen gas. It's all on the uh, New. This is the basic thing. Um, what you find is if you don't mix it properly, what can happen is this decomposition will not go right. This decomposition doesn't go right. What you do, what, what can happen is you can get a uh, number of possible reactions. One is I'm not going to balance these reactions unlike the one up there. I'm going to get potassium nitrate going into a combination of nitrogen dioxide or nitrogen dioxide uh, nitrogen oxygen potassium nitrite and potassium oxide. That's what happens if you get bad reaction mixture. You don't want that. What happens when you do that is nitrogen, especially the nitrogen dioxide, is horrifically corrosive stuff. And it'll just get, I mean, if it gets on anything, it'll just, <sighs> your eyes. And also, it'll just, it'll ruin the, the reaction. You'll get maybe a half as much smoke out of it and half as much heat. So, be sure, that's why you have to be sure to mix the reactants thoroughly, going to the point of even melting the sugar, ideally. All right. Now, the other reaction we're concerned with, that's our oxidation, where we get our oxygen for the oxidation from the oxidizing agent. The other reaction we're concerned with is our fuel, which is sucrose, where we take C11H12O11 and oxygen goes to carbon dioxide and water. And if you've taken some regular chemistry, you'll know how to balance this, so I'll just go ahead and do that uh, really quick right here.
Oh, sorry. Go. It's very simple. All right, so then what you end up with as your net reaction, I'm going to go ahead and make some space up here. Edit that out too. What you end up with, with your, as your net reaction is by balancing out those initial two reactions, you know you need 11 oxygens, and that condition above gives you 5 oxygens. Prime factors, not very nice, so we end up needing 55 in the balanced equation. And so you have, you have a 5 sucrose. And here's the unpleasant one. So you end up with 11 potassium nitrate goes into 55 CO2 plus 55 H2O plus the extra products of the decomposition potassium nitrate, which are, um, let's see, not very nice here, but 11 over 2, uh, sorry, it's a mistake, but I'm not going to fix it now, K2O plus 22M2, we'll edit that down, so there you have it, 5 sucrose plus 11 potassium nitrate goes into 55 carbon dioxide, 55 water. 11 halves potassium oxide and 22 nitrogen gas. Really weird equation. All right, so as you can see, this provides a very rapid oxidation process. Going back into the sort of the nature of that is this sucrose in air under the partial pressure of oxygen burns all right. You know, you can get it to catch on fire. Just try to take some sugar in a blowtorch, but it's not very interesting. But when you have this oxidizer mix, the oxygen is interspersed directly. It's released, you know, at the level of the actual crystal lattice into the sugar. And so it's very, very available. And so that will rapidly, greatly accelerate the rate at which the reaction can take place. Which is a great benefit when you want to produce that plume of smoke. And so you can derive from this the necessary mass ratios because it's 5 to 11 for the necessary mole ratios. And given the uh, two molar masses, see, molar mass of sugar is 342 grams. So 342 times 5, and you have 11 potassium nitrates multiplied by molar mass of potassium nitrate, which is 101. To yeah, so 1170 and 1111, those are going to reduce to approximately 6 oh, to 4 sure. KNO3 to sugar. You can see my head in there. You're ugly ass of the light, Chief. Oh my god, did you just head in there when I was. Here, I'll redo it to the side.